Hello and welcome to PMP Certification Course offered by Simply Learn. In this lesson, we will focus on project stakeholder management. There are 47 processes in project management grouped into 10 knowledge areas and mapped to five process groups. In this lesson, we will look at the 10th knowledge area, that is, project stakeholder management and its processes. In the next screen, let us understand who stakeholders are. A stakeholder is anybody who has a stake in the project. A stakeholder may be an individual, a group, or an organization who may affect or be affected by or perceived to be affected by a decision, activity, or outcome of a project. Further, the nature of the impact can be positive or negative, thus giving rise to the notion of positive or negative stakeholders. Irrespective of whether a stakeholder is positive or negative, it is important to engage with the stakeholders and get them involved in the project. This can make a critical difference to the success or failure of the project. A single disgruntled stakeholder can bring the entire project to its knees, whereas an actively engaged and influential stakeholder can have the opposite effect. Let us understand who the common stakeholders of a project are. There are several categorizations of stakeholders. The project managers themselves are important stakeholders. The project team members represent stakeholders in the project. The senior management of the organization, which is working on the project, has a stake in the project. The sponsor, that is the person or entity that provides the money and resources for the project and essentially champions the project, is an important stakeholder. The customer, which may be different from the sponsor, is a stakeholder as well. For instance, in many of the projects in the social sector, the sponsor may be the government or a development agency, whereas the customers would be the people who actually benefit from it. The end users, which may be different from the customers or the sponsors, are stakeholders too. The vendors or suppliers who provide goods or services to the project are important stakeholders. People whose lives may be impacted by the output of the project are also stakeholders. For example, if a highway project requires possession of privately owned land, people whose land is being taken away are the stakeholders. If the construction of a dam or water reservoir benefits the downstream farming communities, they are the stakeholders here. Competitors who provide alternative goods or services are stakeholders too. Sometimes environmentalists or other social groups may become stakeholders. The government or political leadership may become stakeholders for projects in the public domain. It is sufficient to state that there could potentially be hundreds of stakeholders for a large project. It is in the interest of the project manager and the project team to clearly identify all such stakeholders up front and then actively manage them throughout the project. In the next screen, let us discuss the classification models for stakeholder analysis. Not all the stakeholders have the same amount of influence or power over the project. Therefore, the way to manage each stakeholder needs to be calibrated based on a proper classification of the stakeholders. This is the role of the classification model. You can come up with a grid that maps the power of the stakeholders, the interest they have, the influence they may have, or the impact that they can have on the project through the power interest, power influence, or influence impact grids. It can be represented by mapping stakeholders to a power or interest grid. The diagram on the screen has x-axis, which represents interest level, and y-axis, which represents the power level. Based on the various combinations of power levels and interest levels, the grid can be divided into four quadrants. The stakeholders on the top right quadrant, with high power and high interest, need to be managed closely. That is, you have to monitor their involvement and engagement very closely. The stakeholders on the bottom right quadrant, with high interest but low power, need to be kept in the loop. That is, you should share information with them and keep them regularly informed. The stakeholders on the top left quadrant with high power but low interest can be managed by keeping them happy, for example, by making sure that their interests and opinions are taken into consideration. The stakeholders on the left bottom quadrant with low power and low interest may be managed less actively by simply monitoring how things are going with them. The salience model describes classes of stakeholders based on their power, ability to impose their will, urgency, need for immediate attention, 
and legitimacy, appropriateness of their involvement level. This is a useful framework to guide the stakeholder management strategy on a project. Practice creating power grids for business scenarios. This will help in understanding the level of engagement a project manager needs to maintain with various stakeholders. In the next screen, let us discuss the Stakeholder Engagement Assessment Matrix. The Stakeholder Engagement Assessment Matrix allows visualizing the current and desired states of a stakeholder's involvement in the project. The five levels of involvement are as unaware, resistant, neutral, supportive, and leading. Unaware is where the stakeholder is not aware of the project or its impact. Resistant is where the stakeholder is aware of the impacts and is resistant to change. Neutral is where the stakeholder is aware of the project and is neither supportive nor in opposition to the project. Supportive is where the stakeholder is aware of the project and its impact and is supportive of the change. Leading is where the stakeholder is aware of the project and impacts and is actively engaged to ensure that the project is successful. Let us now look at the matrix. The table has one row per stakeholder identified. You place C in the column which best indicates the current level of engagement for that stakeholder. Then you place D in the column which best indicates the desired state of engagement. This table can be a quick visualization tool that helps understand where work has to be done in the stakeholder management activities. In the next screen, let us discuss the skills required for stakeholder management. Stakeholder management is both an art and a science. Since it involves dealing with people, and people are inherently nonlinear and unpredictable, there is no one size that fits all strategies or tools that will work while managing them. However, a project manager may use a few traits and techniques while managing stakeholders, which are classified as interpersonal skills and managerial skills. A project manager must possess good interpersonal skills, that is, must invest the time and energy to build trust. This involves multiple things, such as establishing a personal rapport, following through on commitments, being punctual, etc. Once the trust is established, it helps in smoothing many difficult bends. Conflict management is an important skill for a project manager. While communicating with stakeholders, the project manager must practice active listening. They must not assume that they have all the answers. Instead, they should spend some time to understand the issues and the stakeholders' points of view. This alone can go a long way in smoothing ruffled feathers and building constructive relationships. Resistance to change is natural. A project manager must know how to convert that into a positive energy in its favor. Managerial skills that may help in accomplishing the project objectives. A project manager must be able to build consensus among the group. While absolute uniformity may not always be possible or desirable, the project manager must use techniques to ensure widespread discussions and arrive at a path that the group can buy into. The project manager must be able to influence people, often without necessarily being in the position of authority. The project manager must be skillful to negotiate agreements. The project manager must be able to understand and modify organizational behavior in order to move the project in a certain direction. In Hey, want to become an expert in project management? Then subscribe to the Simply Learn channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in project management, click here.